on behalf of our gorgeous community, we're all proud to present it to one and only my friend for many, many moons, Miss Oprah Winfrey. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Woo! Hello, Glad! Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is just the best room ever, I have to say. What a special, 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 special honor to receive the Vanguard Award for being an ally. I thank you. Thank you, Glad. And thank you, Sarah Kate Ellis, for having me here tonight and gathering such a spectacular room of people, like Miss Nisi Nash. I love her. Uh, a special thank you to Paolo and Miss Chili Pepper who I have known since 1987. I went to my first show, thank you, drag show. And Chili, I didn't know when I asked them to ask you to do this award that you didn't fly. So she's been on a train for three days getting here <laughs> to Chicago. Thank you so much for coming. I also wanna just, just, just take a moment and acknowledge every person in this room, every one of you in this space, for being who you are, for standing in the truth of who you are, because it's a beautiful thing to witness and an even more beautiful thing to be a part of. I have to say that many people don't know this, but 35 years ago, my brother Jeffrey Lee passed away when he was just 29 years old from AIDS. Growing up at the time, we did, in the community that we did, we didn't have the language to understand or to speak about sexuality and gender in the way that we do now. And at the time, I really didn't know how deeply my brother internalized the shame that he felt about being gay. I wish he could have lived to have witnessed these liberated times and to be here with me tonight. All the years, all the years of the Oprah show for me were about sharing stories that actually helped people be more of their authentic selves. And I know that that is the truest form of what it means to be free, to have personal freedom, to be able to fully be who you are, to have the truest expression of yourself as a human being. And what I've learned over the years of interviewing over 35,000 people one-on-one. -on -one. 35,000 people one-on-one. -on -one. Is that every single person wants the same thing and that is the desire to feel seen and to know that what we say matters and to know that we matters. So back in 1987, I took the show, I remember, to a small town in Williamson, West Virginia. And I had a town hall there after I heard that local officials there had shut down the community pool for AIDS patient, Mike Sisko. So you all, some of you younger people don't know how bad it was. They shut the whole pool down and the town turned against him because he'd gone swimming with his sister. And it caused such an uproar that there was rampant misinformation and misguided fear. So we took our whole show there and we brought a medical expert. It took us days to find somebody who would have the courage to come on as a medical expert to even speak about it at the time because even medical experts were afraid of being attacked. So we brought the facts and tried to erase some of the biases and then went back 23 years later to revisit that community and help people to confront their beliefs around homosexuality and saw both the personal growth and the lack of personal growth that had taken place. So I knew then, back in 1987, that I wanted to and needed to do more. So I did, I did. In 1988, 1988, using the platform of the Oprah Show, we started to celebrate National Coming Out Day. Yes. 
I don't know, is there still National Coming Out Day? I don't know. Well, in 1988, it was big. And people would come on the show to tell me they were gay, but they wouldn't tell, hadn't told their parents. And so we started to have to have people sign an agreement to say, you have to tell your family before this show airs. <laughs> really, I don't want your mama coming after me. <laughs> that happened a lot. So I wanted to create a space, a safe space to bring the lives and the profound stories of the LGBTQ community front and center to our audience. Those like the incredible Miss Chili Pepper that most folks around the country would otherwise have never had the opportunity to meet. My intention at the time was to make it clear that every single person who comes to this planet deserves the right to love the person they want to love and be the person they most fully want to be. So, in 1996, we met and shared the story of the beautiful young AIDS activist, Hydea Broadbent, when she was just 11 years old, she was on the show, and she recently passed away having used her life empowering others. And she showed us that people living with HIV today when on effective treatment can lead healthy lives and do not transmit HIV. <laughs> and then, it was 1997, a decade after the Williamson show, I got a call from Ellen asking me to play the role of a therapist on her show as she came out and became the first gay lead character on a US network television show. So I did that and had Ellen as a guest on my show. It took me by surprise when I received more vitriolic hate mail than in all of my 25 years of doing the show. And this was before social media, y'all. People were actually writing down, <laughs> paying for a stamp, <laughs> and then mailing in their hate and outrage. In 2004, when I surprised Paulo Presta at his family's grocery store in the suburbs of Chicago, the world saw how a bright internal light can flourish when able to live out your truth. You are joy personified. That's what you are, Paula. And then when OWN launched in 2011, we were able to bring powerful documentaries such as Becoming Chaz and I Am Jazz to the screen, along with conversations with activists like Janet Mock. Janet charting new ground. And just a few years ago, as you saw on the tape, Elliot Page entrusted me to share his joy of being liberated in his transition, which helped open up the understanding of the challenges, the fears and pressures facing our trans youth today. I am proud to support and produce projects centering on the LGBTQ storylines through Harpo, through OWN, and I will continue to hire queer and trans filmmakers to bring authentic characters to the screen. Like nominees here tonight, Trace Lissette and our fantastic Hulu series, Black Cake. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to be able to work with GLAAD to make sure we get it right along the way. Because this is what I know, I know, I know for sure. And that is that when we can see one another, truly see one another, when we are open to supporting the truth of a fellow human, it makes for a full, rich, vibrant life for us all. And that's what I wish my brother Jeffrey could have experienced. A world that could see him for who he was and appreciate him for what he brought to this world. I am proud to receive this honor. Thank you, Glenn!